Hi everybody, welcome back. So we are on this rolling hill now with slope and you have learned what slope is, you have calculated slope from a graph, you have calculated slope between two points and so here is your next thing. You're gonna be determining slope or calculating slope given a table. So you're gonna see that this video has a lot in common with the finding slope from two points. So this one might come a little bit easier to you, so I hope that you, by the end of this video, will be able to determine slope when given any type of table. So again, I just wanna give this refresher of our slope formula, and my head's in the way right now. So this says slope formula right back here. So let's see what our slope formula is. Let's just review that formula. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over x2 minus x1. And we remember that if we have two points, right? So if I have the point two, seven, and another point that is negative five, six, I need to remember how to label those two points and plug them into my formula. So when I substitute these, I'm looking for an x1, y1, x2, y2, this is point number one. So in point number one, I have an x and I have a y. And I put the little one here because these are both in point one. So the x for point one, the y for point one. And over here in point two, again, you have an x and a y, but these are both in point two. So I put x2 and y2. Now that you have them labeled, it's super easy to just substitute into this formula. So I have m equals, instead of y2, I'm going to look up here, my y2 was 6 minus, that minus comes from the equation right here, minus y1, my y1 is 7 over x2, so I look for x2 and that's negative 5, minus, right, that minus comes from the equation, x1, which is 2. Now that I've filled those in, you can do your math straight across the top. So 6 minus 7, so if you have 6 and you take away 7, you're at negative 1. At the bottom, if you have negative 5 minus 2, if you're at negative 5 and you subtract 2 more, you would be at negative 7. And then I can simplify this fraction, a negative over a negative leaves me with a positive. So my answer would be positive one over seven. Remember, we like to leave slopes as fractions because this tells me exactly how much that I will rise and exactly how much that I will run. That's why we can leave it as a fraction because it's rise over run. Okay, that was just a recap of two points and how to find slope. Remember, this video is all about tables, though. So keeping this in mind, you're going to see that tables are pretty similar to two points. So let's go ahead and clear this off, and let's go to our next slide. Our first slide, or our first example here, has a table, and we are going to calculate slope from this table. We're going to use that same slope formula. So my slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. There is our formula. Now remember, we need some things to fill into this formula. We need an x1, y1, x2, y2. We need those four things. So if I am looking at this table, it organizes it perfectly. These are our x values straight down here, and these are the y values, right? It's like a list of them. This is your first point, 0, 4. One, negative 1, 6. That's your second point. Negative 2, 8, right? These are all points here in this table. These are all points. So if we know how to find slope from two points... Here we're given one, two, three, four, five points. Can't we just take two of those points and find slope? Absolutely. So I am going to use the top two points here. So I'm going to erase all these extra green lines so we don't get confused. I'm going to use these top two points right there. And I'm going to label them so that way I know where to plug them into my formula. So this is the x. For point one, this is the y for 
for point one. This is the x for point two. This is the y for point two. All right, some people like to say this is x1, x2, y1, y2. Either way, we're labeling this, right? So now as I fill it into my formula, I'm going to do some color coding here. So bear with me, okay? Y2 is going to be in blue. So Y2 is right here. It is 6. I'm going to put that 6 in my equation. Then we have a minus sign from the equation. So minus. And then I'm looking for Y1. And Y1 was 4 right here. So minus y1, and then we have over x1, I'm sorry, x2, and x2 is negative 1, and our minus sign, and then our last one is x1. And I'm going to get the x1 from right here, which is 0. So now that I've filled up my formula, we can do our math straight across. 6 minus 4 is 2. Negative 1 minus 0. Negative 1 minus 0, that just leaves me with negative 1. So let's look at this fraction. I can leave this as my answer, 2 over negative 1, right? Because that tells me how much I rise and how much I run. Or this fraction can also be simplified. 2 over 1 is the same thing as just negative 2, right? Anything over 1 is just that number. So either one of these is perfect, okay? Either one of these is perfect. Now there is another formula that some people like to use when given a table. You saw how we filled in those first two points and we figured out how to use x1, y1, y2, y1, and all that to fill into our formula. However, some people like to use a different formula, but it's the same thing. They like to use this formula, change in y over change in X. And you're going to see this is the same thing as this formula up here. Let's talk about what is the change in Y. That means from this first Y to get to this one, what did they have to add or subtract here to go from 4 to 6? They had to add 2, right? 4 plus 2 is 6. Now from 6 to 8, what did they have to do? Add 2. From 8 to 10, what did they have to do? Add 2. And from 10 to 12, what did they have to do? Add 2. So the changing of my y's, how my y's are going from this one to this one to this one to this one, the change of y is adding 2. Let's see what the change in x is going to be. From this first x right here, to this x, what did we have to do? 0 to negative 1. I didn't add this time. To get from 0 to negative 1, I had to subtract 1. From negative 1 to negative 2, I had to subtract 1. Negative 2 to negative 3, I subtracted 1. Negative 3 to negative 4, I subtracted 1. So my change in x down here is a minus 1. Right, I'm minusing one. Look at how this answer looks just like this answer. Right? If you use that slope formula that we used with two points, you still get the exact same answer as if you use this formula. As long as you're using both of those formulas correct, you will always get that same answer. So I'm going to show you both of these ways on our example so that way you can pick whichever way you feel more comfortable with. Both of them work. Okay, so I'm going to show you both. We have two more examples just to make sure that we are on the same page about finding slope from tables. So here is our next table. And we're going to get into this table. It has a little bit of bigger numbers, but that's okay. We're going to start with our slope formula. And that one is m equals y2 minus y1 
over x2 minus x1. We're gonna fill this in just so we can make sure our answer. I'm gonna label my points here. This is the x1, the y1. This is the x2, the y2. Now that I have those labeled, it's easy to just fill them in. So my y2, if I look at my table, it is zero. Minus y1, which is 15. And on the bottom of our, our formula here is x2 minus x1. So x2 is nine minus x1 is 10. So now we're gonna do our math straight across zero minus 15. If I have zero and I minus 15, I would be at negative 15 over, do some math across the bottom, nine minus 10. If you have nine and you subtract 10, you're all the way at negative one. So let's look what happens here. A negative over a negative gives me a positive. So my answer is going to be positive 15 over 1, which is the same thing as just 15, right? You could put just 15. Anything over 1 is just that number. I'm going to leave it as a fraction because now I know this is my rise and that's my run. Okay, my slope is 15 over 1. It was a positive because that double negative right there, negative divided by negative gives me the positive. I'm going to use my other method also to try to make sure that my slope is the same is the same answer and that method is change in y over change in x. Remember this should get us the same answer. You can pick whichever way is easiest for you. So change in y. Let's look from the first y to the next one. So to get from 15 to zero, we had to subtract 15. To get from zero to negative 15, subtract 15 again. From negative 15 to negative 30, we had to subtract 15 again. 30 to negative 45, we had to subtract 15 again. So my change in y's is that I am subtracting 15, so negative 15. Now let's figure out the change in x. So from my first x right here, which is 10, to go to nine, I am subtracting one. From nine to eight, I subtracted one. From eight to seven, you subtract one. From seven to six, you subtract one. So my change in x's are minus one. So look at that, we got that same answer right here. And remember, we can simplify this one also. A negative over a negative leaves you with a positive. You gotta be able to simplify that in order to give your perfect answer. Both of these answers are the exact same. I use two different methods to find them. You're picking whichever method is easiest for you. Now I do want to mention one thing. You notice that all of these on the right hand side here were all the same, right? Minus 15, minus 15, minus 15, minus 15. And on the x here it's minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. They're all gonna be the same, right? On the right side all of them are gonna be the same, the left side they're all gonna be the same. They are all the same rate of change because that's what's so cool about slope right it's the same each time we do it over here on the left and x's it's always going to be subtracting by one if that's what it is it's always going to be subtracting by 15. it's never going to be this one is subtract 15 this one is subtract 16 this one is minus 13 this one is minus 16. right it's not going to be different like that if it is different that's something else and we're going to talk about that later on in the year but that pattern will always be the same there. So I'm gonna clear this out. I believe we have one more example to do together. Here's one last table here. Let's make sure we are all on the same page. So I'm gonna use my first formula, which is my slope formula. So M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And we're gonna fill it in. So X1, y1, x2, y2. We're gonna fill this in. y2 is five, 
minus y1 is 9 over x2 is 0 minus x1 is negative 6. Oh my goodness, look at that. We talked about this when we were calculating slope between two points. A double negative right here changes to a positive. So I have a big old plus sign there now. So let's see what our math is straight across. 5 minus 9. If you're at 5, subtract 9. That puts you at negative 4. Now at the bottom here, it says 0 plus 6, which gives me 6. So negative 4 over 6, I could simplify this one more time, right? It's a negative over a positive, so my answer stays negative. But I can divide both of these by 2 and simplify a fraction. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So there is my simplified fraction there. Negative 2 over 3. I'm going to use my other formula just in case you are picking that one as your easier one. It is the change in y. And guys, notice that I'm writing these formulas out each time. Each time I do a problem, I'm writing these formulas out. The more that you write these formulas, the easier it'll be in your memory. So write them out each time. It took, what, 10 seconds? Write them out, okay? Change in y, change in x. So from this y to this y, to get from 9 to 5, I subtract 4. To get from 5 to 1, I subtract 4. 1 to negative 3 is subtract 4. And 3, negative 3 to negative 7 is subtract 4. So my change in y was subtracting 4. Let's see our change in x. So our change in x to go from negative 6 to 0. Negative 6 to 0, I'm adding here. I'm adding 6. 0 to 6, I'm adding 6. 6 to 12, I'm adding 6. 12 to 18, I'm adding 6. So my change in x's would be I was adding 6. So again, look at that answer compared to this one right here. We can still simplify this fraction, right? We could divide both of these by 2, and it would give us negative 2 over 3. Again, we got the same exact answer no matter which method you use. So tables are pretty cool. You got two different methods to use here. Other than that, I believe that was our last example that we're going to do together. Let's go ahead and wrap things up, though. So this was how to determine slope given a table. You've already learned how to determine slope from a graph, determine slope from two points, and now we talked about a table, right? Tables, you can use that same slope formula that you know. So if you know that one formula, you can use it no matter what. But there's also that change in y over change in x that sometimes might be a little bit easier. So that was how to determine slope from a table. Remember, guys, if you did not get something there, your teacher is always available for questions. So please reach out to them and ask those questions. Have a great rest of your day.